Hello, everyone. My name is... I'm Ty Knoxville. Welcome to Jackass. Okay. And this is the Pegasus 1979 playing in the STRV S1. The first Swedish premium tank with a hydraulic suspension. Now, the hydraulic suspension is something new to the Swedish tanks from tier 8. You get the nudist, the tier 9, the SRV 1030, and a tier 10, the SRV 103B that have hydraulic suspension. And that's kind of the whole selling point of the Swedish tank destroyers. But some people don't really want to grind, so Wargaming was like, you know what? We can sell a premium tank that does the same thing. And I have to admit, I really enjoy playing the SDRV S1 because it's completely different. It's a bit more campy than you might expect. But when you do get in a good position where you can have free shots on your enemies, the rate of fire is dead, they're kind of disappointing. But the alpha is great, accuracy is top squeeze, and it's very stealthy. Now, interesting point about this whole thing is the Swedish tanks came out last year, December? Yeah. Somewhere mid-December last year, and we received the SDF VS1 on the pre in the premium store not even a month and a half ago, around the 21st of March, I believe. Why do I bring up this point? We've had the French tanks in the game with their autoloaders for a very, very long time, if I'm gonna have to go back and see when. Since 2012, we've had the French tanks with their autoloaders. And only now, about a month ago, did we receive the very first autoloading premium tank in the Lorraine 4DT. So what played more gaming slam out the SDRV S1 maybe three months after releasing the Swedish tanks and only now, five years later, released the first premium autoloader. Well, except for the AMX 1375, I'm talking medium tank here because you know the bat chat. I believe Wargaming was kind of afraid that they would plunk out a premium autoloader that was too strong. Think of the Batchet. The Batchet is very good. The Batchet 25T AP is a very good tank if you know how to play it. The Lorraine 40 ton back then, when it was tier 8, was good. When it is tier 9, it was poo pancakes. So I think Wargaming had, first of all, no good candidate for a tier 8 premium medium tank that was an autoloader. And the second thing is, I, when the French tanks got released back in 2012, people were complaining that the French tanks, the autoloaders, were extremely overpowered because it was new. You couldn't, people didn't know how to handle them yet. They could drive in unload six shots back then in the 1390 and five in the bat chat and it would completely destroy you nowadays it's more of a we've learned how to deal with it and wargaming has sensed that autoloaders are in some way overpowered but they have a reload so that's how they finally decided you know what we're gonna release the 40 ton the lorraine 40 ton as a premium tank and try and balance it as much as we can so what does this have to do with the strv s1 i believe wargaming doesn't think that the hydraulic suspension is overpowered in any way. Yes, it's very accurate. Yes, the reload has been pretty much destroyed on the tier 8, but it, it's on par with the Udas. Actually, no, I tell a lie. The DPM on the SDRV S1 is 290 higher, basically 300 higher than on the Udas 03. So what is the point of the SDRV S1? Well, it's very, very sneaky. It doesn't have the highest DPM. If anything, it's got pretty much the lowest DPM. It's on the bottom of the skill. Look at the AT-15, 2.7k. The Yaktaga AT-8, 2.6k. Now you've got the STRV as well with 2.3k. And the Udus is the lowest DPM tank, a tier 8 tank destroyer with 2k DPM. Even lower than the SU-101 with 122mm. That's how they balanced out these tank destroyers at tier 8. Giving them good camo, giving them good gun elevation and depression because of that suspension but terrible DPM, so you can't sit in the back and just pew, 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 like you can do in the tier 10. It's, it's building up towards what you're supposed to be doing yet, but imagine how being a tier 6 against an SDRV S1, there's literally nothing you can do. You can't pan it, you can't see it, you can't out-DPM it. There's one small thing that I have to mention about these tanks, the SDRV S1 and the Udas. They've got incredibly, incredibly high penetration. They've got the highest penetration of any tier 8 tank with 288. That's good enough to punch through mouses if they're not angled. And they fire APCR standard, so their shell velocity is incredibly high. Think of the ISU 152, you think 750 alpha, 286 millimeters of penetration. Has a shell velocity of 880 meters per second compared to the SDRV S1, 1450. Not quite twice as fast, but oh, you will. You don't have to pre-aim as much. You don't have to make sure that you figure out the path of the tank you're shooting at. No, it's just kind of point and shoot towards the tank and it will hit. No guaranteed pen, though, because you're firing APCR. Less normalization has more of a hissy fit if it hits a well-angled target. I just noticed that I started off saying this is the first Swedish premium tank with a hydraulic suspension. Probably going to be the only 
Swedish premium tank with a hydraulic suspension. What I wanted to say is the first premium tank at tier 8, because Wargaming has got the STRV-81 somewhere still in the works back there. That is basically a Centurion 1, as you would find it in the British tech tree, but Swedish. I mean, it doesn't really have a point, because no one really is going to keep a Swedish tank, maybe with exception of the STRV-74. But the top tiers are the Kranvan, a heavy tank, and the STRV 103B, a tank destroyer. So I don't quite understand why they have a medium tank at tier 8 as premium. Because the tier 8 normal tanks are the Yudis, a tank destroyer, and the Emil 1, a heavy tank. You can't use it as a crew trainer, but if some people liked the Centurion 1 and want a premium version of it, well, the STRV 81 is, I guess, what you want. I'm not going to lie, I would have no clue whatsoever what would be a good tier 8 heavy tank premium for the Swedish, because I, I know nothing about the Swedish tanks. I, uh, I knew about the S-tank type tanks, but that's the only thing I knew about them. I had no clue what the Emil or the Kranvan were. I know the Kranvan had a hull, not a turret. I know the STRV-74 actually existed in the lower tiers, but I'm not sure about the higher tiers on the heavy tank line. Whoopsie! Talking about Swedish premium tanks, the STRV M4257 Alt A2 is a autoloader, but I meant tier 8 autoloaders, not tier 6. Sorry. So anyway, Pegasus has found himself in a 1v3 situation where the Emil is now somewhere in a, what is it, 6, maybe B5. The Borsiki, we know where he is, and the IS3 is probably close to the Emil. I've noticed with the STRV S1, it's not really a late game tank. It's the type of tank that wants to sit in a corridor and wait for people to stupidly push. It's not a tank that you can move around in because of that siege mode. You have to switch to siege mode before you can shoot. So if you're driving somewhere and you see someone to your left, you cannot quickly turn your turret and tank around and shoot him. Now you have to quickly turn your tank around, go into siege mode, which will take two seconds. And in that two seconds, the tank that has seen you and you have seen him will have put a shot into you and is probably running or already busy flanking you. Seeing as today is quite tank destroyer focused, uh, the Chinese server are getting a exclusive Chinese tank destroyer line. And the reason for that is uh, China. I mean, the reason the Chinese tanks were added so early on was to get the Chinese server a bit more populated because Chinese tanks. But the thing is, the Chinese tanks are a hidden gem. The 113 and the WZ11114 are amazing tanks. The 110 is better armored than you might expect. The light tanks before this particular patch were amazing. During this patch 9.18, they're somewhat disappointing. And I've been following what has been leaking from the Super Test and from Wargaming themselves about these Chinese tank destroyers. And they're pretty much clones of the Russians. They've they're based on the chassis of the WZ-120 tanks, at least the higher tier one. They've got 750 Alpha or 440 Alpha. Think of the SU-12254. Think of the ISU. Those kind of tanks. So it, we're not missing anything. It, we're just missing a tank destroyer line that some people might enjoy and some not. I think it's time to address the elephant in the room. The Type 5 Heavy is top of the tree. So there's going to be more big fat armored high explosive guns in the matchmaking as if we don't have enough to deal with with high explosive nowadays with the artillery nerf and i saw it coming i saw the type 5 heavy becoming top of the tree because it had been over buffed in patch 9.17.1 together with the mouse they are they are in a very very good position but the problem is i like the mouse more because it doesn't fire high explosive if a mouse is firing at me i can angle and hopefully bounce his ap or possibly apcr if i see a type 5 heavy and he can see me he will damage me Nonetheless, it doesn't matter what I do. The problem is I cannot damage him if he's well angled because he has some stupid 270 millimeter frontal armor. Better than the mouse. And it's faster than the mouse. So if you're a masochist and you love playing tier 7, tier 8, possibly tier 9 with high explosive, be my guest. Have fun this month. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be very, very Japanese. And the Japanese tanks themselves have been, in my opinion, very disappointing. Uh, the best tank and the medium tank line was, in my opinion, the SDA-1. It had good gun handling, it was fast, it was it was a slightly better version of the Centurion-1. And then you get to the Type 61, and the Type 61 is... It shows you what you have to deal with at tier 10 playing the STB-1. Terrible gun handling. The gun handling on the STB-1, in my opinion, still ruins the tank. You've, had, you've got the best DPM of any 
390 alpha gun, which is amazing. It's great DPM, but you can't use it because your shells just flip-flop left and right along the tank you're aiming at. With about, I don't know, 17 years of aim time and the accuracy that is disappointing to say the best, it it ruins it. It's a brawler, but you don't have the armor to brawl. It's a hold-on warrior. It's, it's the type of tank you have to find yourself on a ridgeline fighting tanks that have no clue why you were on that ridge line shooting at them and they have to be like a maximum 100 meters away for you to pen every single shot. SCB-1 is very, very situational. Now this part of the gameplay is kind of boring. It's a, as the title says, standoff. The Bortic is on top of the hill, the SCR vs one Pegasus is at the bottom of the hill and they can't really fight each other. So I'm going to skip forward to the part where one of these two tanks is going to have to take the initiative. No, oh, is it the Borsak? Is the Borsak going to do it? N no, no, he's not. No, no, no. It's it's going to take some time. It's uh, They have been at this for quite some time. There's one minute 30 left on the, the clock. And it looks like the Borsak is going to make the decision. I mean, Pegasus can't really climb the hill. No, the Borsak is coming down. Yeah, and he misses. 